Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. The valiant efforts of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit and other agencies continues to bear fruit as over 3,000 pounds of marijuana valued over $523 million were on Saturday last destroyed. The narcotics were from seizures at various ports in Guyana, which cases have been concluded in the courts. The frequency of seizures has increased dramatically over the past year. We've had outstanding successes. We've not only seized large quantities of narcotics, but also the vehicles, the boats, and the airplanes too, in relation to this uh, nefarious activity. The use of narcotics, particularly in our communities, is destructive of those communities, and particularly of the youth. And it encourages crime and violence. The Home Affairs Minister pointed out that Guyana is a minor transit point for trafficking of narcotics, noting that most of the marijuana seized were destined for North America and Europe. Residents of Regions 5 and 6 will soon benefit from services offered through the Ministry of Tourism, Industry and Commerce's Small Business Bureau, SBB. Minister Onej Walrun made the disclosure on Friday last after meeting with members of the various chambers of commerce who expressed concerns about accessing such services. Immediately we're setting up uh, an officer from the, um, the Small Business Bureau and the, the Ministry to come and train. They will have a help desk here. So there is the, that disconnect, sorry, from the you know, a distance. Um, we're going to have a point person here that they can um, use and we will be in contact with in terms of getting applications, import-export license, getting um, application for the Small Business Bureau. Minister Walren said a help desk will be established at the Central Quarantine Chamber of Commerce, while another will be set up at the Region 5 RDC office. Meanwhile, the Small Business Bureau on Monday distributed some $4.5 million to nine persons living with disabilities, with each person receiving $500,000. Minister Walren said under the government's One Guyana initiative, every citizen will benefit from the country's resources. That every single person, every group that um, seen or unseen, um, uh, those are those groups of people who might not ordinarily be included in initiatives like these can benefit from the resources um, of government and have the opportunity to better themselves, better their, their families and better their communities. Minister Walren hopes the grants distributed will help the residents to expand or establish their own businesses. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Hugh Todd, over the weekend met with residents of Riversview and Rockstone in Region 10 to discuss and find solutions to issues affecting residents. And while we were at the level of central government, we were crafting policies to ensure that we can reach each and every community throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. We have to also visit your communities to meet with you and interact with you to also hear from you what are some of the priorities that you have at the top of your agenda for your community itself. Minister Todd also reiterated government's plans for the various sectors that will better the lives of all Guyanese. We're going to diversify this economy. We're going to build our infrastructure our ICT, we're going to move our health care and have advanced medical care. We're also going to have highly skilled and trained people here in Guyana based on our programs. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Muhabir Anil Nadlal, says a mixture of in-person and virtual hearings must form part of the new normal. The Attorney General was speaking on Tuesday at the opening of the Demerara Assizes for April 2022. The session was opened after a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Virtual courtrooms have the ability to instantaneously transport judges, magistrates, attorneys at law to courtrooms 
and when the hearing is over, they are immediately transported back to their homes, offices, cars, or the local bar. This reduction in time needed to travel allow these officers to shift focus to other matters much quicker. The Attorney General pointed out that when COVID-19 threw the world into chaos, the judiciary had to find ways to ensure justice was served. In the midst of this physical shutdown of courts, which graduated to virtual courts, the legal fraternity stood tall and rose to the occasion of adjusting to the new normal. We could no longer operate as we used to. Technology and internet became indispensable. We heard of Zoom for the first time, and e-meeting and teleconferences became the norm rather than the exception in our day-to-day -day and other operations. Minister of Parliamentary Affairs and Governance, Gil Teixeira, says transparency and accountability and the process of consultation in decision-making have been the hallmarks of successive PPPC governments. These are demonstrated, she noted, in the number of community outreaches across the country, led by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali and his cabinet members. Ministers are also consistently meeting with organizations, unions, and agencies relevant to their sectors. Whether it is an issue, you know, Lennox, of drains in my street, whether it's issues of, you know, farmers' prices, whether it's issues of Armenian land or women's issues, that's for the last year and a half, there's been an explosion of people in our country going to these bottom house meetings, these community meetings, these town hall meetings, and being free and open whether they voted for APNU or the PUP or ANOG or whoever to represent themselves. That is inclusivity. Minister Teixeira's statement comes on the heels of recent media reports of civil society groups accusing the government of not consulting citizens on key issues. She said the process of inclusive governance has been reflected in almost every bill, including the historic local content and the Natural Resource Fund NRF bills, which were brought to the National Assembly by the PPPC administration. Even at the level of her ministry, the minister noted a number of consultations have been held with organizations. Two of those consultations held this year apprised of the draft Expanded Low Carbon Development Strategy, LCDS. Some of the NGOs who are complaining were invited to my stakeholders' meetings. Now, one or two of them came under different names, under different NGO names, mm -hmm. but they, their NG, the NGOs who are complaining were invited. And so, but they didn't speak. Minister of Public Service Sonia Parag has expressed satisfaction with the number of women participating in the first oil and gas course being offered by 3T Inermec through the Ghana Online Academy of Learning Scholarship Program. The minister visited the 3T Inermec Training Center at Luziknan, East Coast Demerara, where she had a first-hand experience of the theoretical and practical lessons being offered to the students. I was happy to hear that we have a great number of of women doing these courses, you know, because um, the world is moving towards gender equality. Guyana is definitely on board. Each of these classes have women in them, and a significant amount is here with the rigging, and this is not something that is a soft skill. 80 persons are part of the first batch of students. Due to the nature of the training, each class has 12 students, which allows participants to receive the same level of attention. I think they're doing a fantastic job. Um, the classes are not to, a, to such a capacity that they can't have the individual attention that they need to uh, be trained in the skill. And what's even more important is that after the skills training, they will be doing an internship and then employment, which is fantastic. And these are all Guyanese. Government is once again showing its compassionate nature by cushioning the impact of the low fish catches. On Wednesday, Agriculture Minister Zulfakar Mustafa distributed food hampers to 170 fisherfolk at the Luzignan Community Center ground. Minister Mustafa reiterated that government is moving to diversify the industry with emphasis being placed on the Marine Cage Initiative, which has remarkable potential. As a government, we are trying to make things happen. Now, we this year, we will be working with the marine fisher folks, marine fisher folks like you. We are starting a cage culture where we will help you all to get caged, right? And you wear that in the Atlantic Ocean right here. So that is guarantee 
uh, when we work out the when we work out the income, one marine cage can give a fisher folks almost eight million dollar annually. The minister said the government is advancing the effort to implement the new fishing technology to help supplement the income of fisher folk. We, we met with the five door fishermen at the Rosignal area there. Some of them say they want to get into the high value crops that we're doing to supplement the fishing. That means if we work along with you and we diversify and give you other things to do, that doesn't mean that you'll stop fish, but we'll help to supplement the income. The massive economic interventions by government since taking office have been strategically rolled out to generate wealth for future generations. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Hugh Todd, says the government is creating policy, economic and physical space for citizens and their descendants to benefit from the immense wealth and prosperity. The wealth is generated by you, the people, the citizens here of Region 5. That wealth is what we want to be intergenerational. So that you can hand over to your kids, your kids' kids, and we can have that intergenerational equity that is built up that will last. Since coming into office in August 2020, government has been working to make Region 5 the livestock capital of CARICOM. It has also sought to develop agriculture with an aim of ensuring the region's food security as lead head of government in the CARICOM Quasi Cabinet with responsibility for agriculture, food security and agricultural diversification. Government has also embarked on a collaborative black belly sheep project with Barbados. This project will see some 1,000 breeding sheep being distributed to farmers soon, targeting at least 20% women and 35% youth. Additionally, to further generate wealth countrywide, government is also ensuring easier access to the Small Business Bureau by establishing a branch office to process grants and offer guidance and advice to entrepreneurs. Meanwhile, Minister Todd noted that key focus is being placed on every citizen. So while we focus on the economic side, ensuring that we can create wealth that is intergenerational, we are also looking at development across the board. Because now that we have a lot of financial windfall that we'll get from oil and soon to be gas, we still have to ensure that we can cater for each and every one. The Guyana Fire Service must always be ready to respond to emergencies, and this is even more critical as the country is transforming into an oil and gas economy. This sentiment was expressed by Minister of Home Affairs, Robeson Ben. The minister says as a result, up-to-date technology must be implemented to enhance the service's capabilities. Minister Ben was at the time delivering the feature address at the opening of the two-day fire service senior officers conference. The question which is now upon us and the responses we have to make in respect of the development of the oil and gas sector and the technologies which are now appropriate to fight fires related to oil and gas operations. And so this is now way beyond the questions of a gas station or a, a, a place which makes oxygen like Dokal or other places, but it's a much bigger thing. And so our awareness, our training has to be stepped up to advance to the level where we can use the appropriate technology to fight fires related to the new developments in oil and gas. Minister Ben says there must be awareness by the fire service of the economy at present and an awareness of the technology that will be required to effectively handle fires in the near future. We have been spending the money, we are bringing in the new assets and we want to see them properly employed. We want to see our firefighters properly equipped out there when they go to fight a fire, not simply for the persons who are affected by the fire, but also for the protection of the firefighters. Nevertheless, the Home Affairs Minister says he is pleased with the improvements the Guyana Fire Service has made over the past year. Human papillomavirus, or HPV, is the most common sexually transmitted infection. It is a group of more than 200 related viruses, some of which are spread through vaginal, anal, or oral sex and fall into two groups, low risk and high risk. 
Dr. Anthony explained that because these infections can lead to long-term illnesses such as cervical, anal, or penile cancer, vaccination against the virus is critical. It is a, a virus that can cause these various types of cancers and therefore we want to vaccinate people to prevent them from getting cancer. The Ministry of Health's aggressive HPV information and vaccination campaign will coincide with the launch of Vaccination Week. The whole effort here is to make sure that we can explain to people the importance of this and then get uh, the children to take these vaccines. Well, we want to do that during the vaccination week. Um, so this month, I think starting from the 22nd, uh, we, we're starting vaccination week. And so during that period, we want to start this process. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel has encouraged staff at his ministry to treat everyone with love and respect in their daily activities. The minister, along with colleague minister Diedat Indar and several religious representatives, joined staff and others from sub-agencies to observe the National Day of Fasting and Prayers, initiated by President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. It's our love that is demonstrated one to the other. Let us be a people that as we pray, we ask God to forgive us of our sins, and while we ask God to forgive us for our wrongdoings, we forgive those who have done us wrong. Today it should be a day of reconciliation. Minister Edger reiterated the need for persons to become their brother's keepers. Meanwhile, over in the compound of the National Communications Network, Minister within the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for public affairs, Kwame McCoy, joined the staff of NCN and the Department of Public Information in an interfaith prayer service. During brief remarks, Minister McCoy noted the significance of the occasion. Praying in this fashion, and by extension as a country is it gives greater strength and helps us to be able to have one common plea to the Almighty as we seek His intervention, as we seek His divine guidance, His blessings in our lives and the country as a whole. And so they say when you pray together, it gives the prayer strength. The Chief Executive Officer of NCN, Nia Suban, and Coordinator of DPI, Edward Lane, also addressed the gathering. Minister McCoy attended a similar prayer service with staff at the Guyana National Printers Limited. In a bid to increase energy efficiency in the commercial, industrial, and residential sectors, the Energy Resources Institute, in collaboration with the Guyana Energy Agency, GEA, launched a manual on energy management and conservation practices. According to the GEA, the manual will allow residents, business owners, and industry technicians to easily understand practice or assess their facilities without the need for support by engineers. The manual aims to provide information needed to develop energy efficiency as well as create awareness among stakeholders to improve energy efficiency. Ultimately, the applications of the manual can lead to reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and Guyana's dependence on fossil fuels. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, in accepting the manual at a formal handing over ceremony, said the manual emphasized on the critical role citizens play in achieving climate stability and advancing the administration's sustainable development agenda and energy transformation. Prime Minister Phillips maintained that the manual provides opportunities for everyone to join the government's efforts to promote energy efficiency and conservation. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.